Good morning, family. Watch Woman 65. Lisa Boyce here with another teaching and a new hat. Meow. I'm doing another teaching. Meow. <laughs> um, I want to um, thank the new subscribers. Um, thank all of you who have subscribed. Uh, just know that you are a family and that you're prayed for daily. Yesterday I was uh, talking about um, having the back of uh, Barry Scarborough and Tim Henderson. I forgot to add Greg Jackson in that. I have your back, brother. I love you. I love all of you. I'm about to come on here and I'm about to talk about kind of piggyback on what Tim Henderson was talking about this morning. He was absolutely correct. And I was going to, uh, see, this is how you are led by the Holy Spirit. I was going to do something else. And I started listening to him and his teaching. And I decided to do something on contending for the faith. Because this is important. YouTube is starting this thing. Uh, I know everybody's worried about it. Let me tell you something. It's just an act of the enemy. Don't worry about it. Pray about it. Either we're going to be raptured um, or it's not going to happen. I don't know what's happening. I feel something strong is about to happen upon the body of Christ. I'm not saying it could be the rapture. I'm praying it will be the rapture. But something is happening in the body of Christ. I felt it strong yesterday, especially after this thing with YouTube came out. For some reason, I just felt like something is about to happen to the body of Christ, and it has nothing to do with YouTube. So, you know, and I'm not saying that the rapture, I'm praying that it's the rapture, but I just feel something in the spirit is about to break forth. That's what I feel. Um... The theme of this ministry is to, um, it's Ephesians 5.11. Um, I'm mandated to call out the fake and the false. Um, but I'm going to go over a teaching about what does it mean to contend for the faith. Um, the epistle of Jude is written to Jewish Christians living in Jerusalem. In the opening passages, the author explains that he had initially attended to write a general letter of encouragement on the topic of the salvation that we share. Instead, Jude explains, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Now, I was going to expose Revelation Mark Hardy because he did something about 20-something hours ago about once saved, always saved. And, of course, he was wrong, as always. But that's okay. Because he's the reason, he's one of the reasons why we have to contend for the faith. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, period. It is not obedience to the Ten Commandments. It is not um, water baptism, speaking in tongues. It is not any of that. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. Jude is concerned because the faith, the Christian, the Christian message of the gospel is under attack. That sounds like today, right now. From false teachers who are spreading dangerous heresies, Jude urges his readers to contend for the faith against those who seek to undermine and erode it. That is what I do here, and that is what the rest of the grace uh, teachers and preachers do also, including Tim Henderson, Barry Scarborough, Greg Jackson, Renee Rowland, a few others. I'm just naming them right off the bat. The Greek word Jude chooses translated contend earnestly, 
usually describes an athletic striving with extreme intensity to win the victory in the physical competition. The Amplified Bible, which I don't read, but some of the stuff in there is not bad. The Amplified Bible translates the, the command as fight strenuously for the defense of the faith. For the defense of the faith. Jude wants all believers to contend earnestly for the faith. A true contender vigorously endeavors to win the competition, not holding anything back. In this case, the struggle is for the faith, which is the saving truth of Jesus Christ and his teachings. 2 Corinthians 11, 3-4. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13 and Hebrews 1 and 2. Since the faith was entrusted to God's holy people, all believers, not just Christian leaders, are called to defend the truth of Jesus Christ. And since this faith was entrusted once and for all, hey, come. Jude intends to stand against those who claim to receive now revelations of truth. Through Christ's personal teachings and the work of the Holy Spirit, Jesus has already given the full message of truth to the apostles. John 14, 26. Paul gives a similar warning not to let anyone listen very carefully to this. Paul gives a similar warning not to let anyone pervert the gospel of Christ with new and different teachings. Galatians 1, 6 through 9. God has spoken and any new continuing, continuing or special, special revelations of truth are to be rejected. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, period. Two basic form, two basic false teachings Jude contends with are stated in verse 4. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. In other words, they're trying to put law back into the mix. This is what's happening now. This is what happened back then. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license of immorality, immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. That's what's happening now. First, Jude opposes the false teachers in their sanctioning of immoral behavior. They pervert the grace of God into a license of for immorality. Second, Jew calls them on their rejection of the deity of Christ. They deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. So when you go back or try to go back to the law, you're basically denying the sovereignty of God. You're basically saying that his blood wasn't enough. And that's what these people are doing. It's funny that Jude was going to write one letter saying one thing, and then he had to change it. That's what I just did. I was going to say one thing, and then I had to go back through the Holy Spirit. Several verses in the New Testament reinforce Jude's call to contend for the faith. Paul charges Timothy to fight the good fight of faith as a soldier of God in pursuit of holy living. Persistent service in defending the gospel, 1 Timothy 6, 11-21. To the church of Corinth, Paul advises believers to see themselves as runners in a race. Run in such a way to get a prize. 1 Corinthians 9, 24-27. To the Philippian church, Paul writes, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. 
Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Philippians 1.27. See, let me tell you something right now. YouTube can take us off there. They can wipe us out. That's true. I got the message too. So did my husband. We all got the message from YouTube. But they can't take your spirit. They can't take your spirit. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, period. The enemy comes in to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ came that you have life and have it more abundantly. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come to see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit. Striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Fight, run, and strive. In other words, contend earnestly for the faith. Now, what does it mean? Fortunately, the book of Jude sets out several disciplines showing us how to contend for the faith. Number one. Build yourself up in the faith. How do you do that? By constantly reading, studying the word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved. Always study the word of God so that you know and understand it. A worker who do, does not need to be ashamed and who rightly divides the word of God. Number two, pray in the Holy Spirit. That doesn't mean speaking in tongues. When you pray in the Spirit, that does not mean speaking in tongues. The Pentecostals got this wrong, and I used this forever, and it was wrong. When we pray in the Holy Spirit, we are letting the Holy Spirit guide us as to what we should pray, who we should pray for, what we are to be praying for. That's letting the Holy Spirit guide you into praying. It's not speaking in gibberish. It's not speaking speaking in your native language. It's letting the Holy Spirit who indwells in you guide you. Pray for understanding. Pray for discernment. Number three, keep yourself in God's love. Jude one twenty one. Staying in God's love meaning living by faith and obedience to God. And that's just simply living under the Holy Spirit 24-7. Number four, wait for hope. Jude 121, to contend for the faith, we must keep the fire of hope alive in our hearts. When Jude says to wait expectantly, expectantly, expecting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life, he is referring to living every moment of life with a competent expectation of the rapture of the church. That's what I wanted to give you this morning. People want to knock grace preachers down and say that we're preaching a false message. Like Mark Hardy, who says that uh, we are to constantly obey and command that we obey the word of God or we will end up in hell. He's wrong. And I pray for him. I pray that he comes out of that because he is definitely wrong. 
The only requirement for today is to believe, is to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now, what he was talking about, I wanted to get into a little bit too. He was talking about active obedience. And I'm going to get into this at a later time because I want to do more uh, research on it. But basically, Mark Hardy wants to bring works into the picture. I was listening to something told me to go to that video that he did and listen to him. Talk about once saved, always saved, and how it's not biblical. I'm going to tell you something. If you believe that you can lose your salvation, you never had salvation. Because there's over several verses, and I gave several verses to one guy who was arguing with me yesterday about being once saved, always saved. Once you are saved, the minute that you believe on the finished work of Jesus Christ, you are saved and you are sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. There is no going back. There is no say, oh, I, I changed my mind. Oh, I, I can't do this. Oh, no. You are sealed. The nanosecond you believe in Jesus Christ. It took me and Pastor Tim Henderson, I love you and I thank you for exposing this because, or telling this is not exposing. I don't, I'm open. <laughs> You told them the truth. It took me 27 years of bondage in the Pentecostal charismatic movement to come out of that and to realize that it is grace through faith. The minute that you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, what he accomplished on the cross, why he accomplished it on the cross, and why we are in need of a savior. The minute I believed in that, I was set free. The minute I accepted the gospel of grace, that's all it is. It is grace and it is enough. It is enough. Grace is enough. This is why we contend for the faith. This is why we fight and tell you what's out there and tell you what to avoid. Because his grace is more than enough. His grace set you free. From the spirit of bondage. It is not a hundred rules. Should we strive for holiness? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said yesterday. And like I said the day before. And like I said past in past days. The Holy Spirit convicts us of righteousness. He leads us in the way in which we should go. We have to follow him. Simple as that. Just do what he says. I was going to do another teaching today and I was diverted to do this. But it is grace through faith in Christ alone. It is not a hundred steps to salvation. It is not 50, uh, it's not speaking in tongues. It's not holy laughter. It's not any of that. It is simply resting in the grace of God and believing on the finished work, the blood that he spilled on Calvary. We accept that, period. Like I said, YouTube can do a lot. Man, they're free to do it. But they can't take away what we already know about the grace of God. They can't take that away. Um, I'm going to come on and do more studies. I'm going to do something on... Passive obedience and active obedience. The active obedience is where 90% of the church is today. We are to be in passive obedience. And I don't mean, and listen very carefully when I say that. I don't mean letting somebody come into your house and robbing you blind and you don't do anything. I'm not talking about that kind of passivity at all. Because I am, uh, I believe in the Second Amendment I believe in the NRA. I am not talking about sitting passively by and letting someone roll all over you. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about walking in the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm talking about, which is where the Christian is to be today. 
You okay? Yeah, give me one. Thanks, I don't have that. Wait a minute. The one that you took mine. I would board the check off. Oh, I'll be there for you in a second. Anyway, people, family, I love you. That's all I wanted to come on with today. I will finish this. Have a good day in the Lord.